All right, my sister, I saw your hand. I want to go ahead and entertain questions. If you have questions, we can go until they kick us out. <laughs> you mentioned that on Saturdays, we don't really keep it holy. And by the conversations we have, and my question is how to avoid that? Because when I get an invitation to go somewhere, they ask me what I do and how it's going. And I don't want to talk about it, but it comes up. And then it's the same thing when somebody, when someone comes to my house, and we start talking things, you know, that is not maybe by the way or, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? I mean, give, me, give me an example of what you do. I am a sales director with America Cosmetics, so I do have that's okay. my business. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, now there are several, several ways to address it. When a person has a career line that we do, and uh, you know, let's say we're talking about something that deals with the Lord, or doesn't deal with the Lord. Let's say, um, you know, I don't know if, what examples we can use right now, but the bottom line is, one of two things. We can either say, you know what, I prefer. The easy way to do it is to say, only because my career is obviously of a secular nature, and it's the Lord's Sabbath, I prefer to tell you about it, but I'd like to do that later on. You know, that's the first thing you do. You can just literally redirect it. You can just totally redirect it. As a result of this being the Lord's Sabbath uh, and my job being of a secular nature, this is not the time really for me to kind of go, go on about what I do. Um, what I like to do is talk about what God did. You know, and you can go ahead and give testimonies, things of that nature, and so on. But when it comes to going into the details of it, that's something that would obviously not be appropriate to do on the Lord's Day. And then, of course, and I'm going to tell you the truth, saints, Many of us are also going to have to do career checks. Mm -hmm. Career checks. In other words, I, you know, I used to really be into martial arts, heavy into martial arts. And uh, when I did martial arts, I also did it even when I was in the church. So after Sabbath, I'd be in the front with the guys and we'd throwing kicks and punches at each other and everything else. Well, here it is that um, I, I even joined a karate organization where we would pray before we beat everybody up. <laughs> it's like, you know, and, and we'd beat each other up. And, that's what the devil can do to us. But that was my career path. I said, man, I want to become a great martial artist. Well, what I did was I had to go back and say, well, what does God say on martial arts? What does the Bible say about it? What does the Spirit of Prophecy say about it? Self-defense and all these concepts. So the more that I started looking at it, I had to realize, man, I have to shift my career path. You know? So that's the first thing I would encourage you to do, all of you, is to take a look at some of the career paths uh, that you may have chosen and really find out, is my career path in harmony with biblical principles. I know some people who wanted to be designers and make all these mini skirts and make all these other things, and it's like, okay, well, what does the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy say about mini skirts? You know, what does it say about that? What does it say about jewelry and makeup? What does it say about all these different things? And you take those principles and let that guide and govern. So that's the first thing I would say. But then, if we are doing something that we know heaven's words of inspiration does approve, then again, when somebody asks about it, you can do one of two things, which is, number one, you can just redirect it because my job is of a secular nature and this is the Lord's Sabbath. I prefer to tell you about those things later this evening, but here's some things I'd like to talk about now. And you can redirect it back on the Lord. Or you can give it in testimonial format. You know, there was a time that I didn't even have a job. And this is what the Lord did for me and so on. And you're able to turn it into a testimonial so that way at all times Christ is the focus. Now, there are some people that are slick. Um, <laughs> Motive is very big in this. There was literally a story of one man who said, you know, if it wasn't the Sabbath, I'd ask you how much you paid for your car. <laughs> <laughs> and the other brother said, well, if it wasn't the Sabbath, I'd tell you I paid 50000 for it. <laughs> That's slick. That's slick. So don't be slick. You know, don't, don't, don't play those games with God because God knows our hearts. So if we cannot be genuine and give a genuine testimony of the goodness of God, it is better to just simply say, because my job is of a secular nature, and because it is the Sabbath, I prefer to tell you about those things at a later time. And let's talk about this right now. Yes? Well, I think um, it's, it's, it's a lot of your point, the way, you know, to direct yep. people, and basically that's what I do. Because, but of the impression of changing people's lives, basically that's what I do. And, you know, and that's kind of impressive, but I do have a great testimony. So that's, thank you so much. It sure. It helped me a lot. Okay, you're very welcome. Uh, yes, my brother. You mentioned that uh, probably like 20% of the people at churches actually do the work. I, I'd say it's more like 10%. Yeah. 
I don't know what I would agree. Do. I was being generous. <laughs> so, so what can like we do as individuals in our local churches to increase that percentage of participation? Ministry of Healing, page 149 says, many would get started in the work if they were simply taught how to begin. <laughs> Ministry of Healing, 149. So, the work of the leader in the church whether lay leader, ordained leader, or otherwise, start training the people in your church. Start training them. Hold educational uh, forums where you can say, okay, we're going to have a study on how to give Bible studies. We're going to have a session on how to study the Bible, and so on. Start having those mini training sessions. Doesn't matter how many people show up. Jesus had 12 and turned the world upside down. So all, if you want to turn Texas upside down, if Jesus can do the world in 12, you can probably do Texas in two. So just go ahead and get started with whatever little number you got. But understand, many would get started. But a lot of people are like, I don't know what to do. Really, I don't know what to do. That's what inspired me to do what we did. My, my wife and I, we've been traveling all over this world for a long time now. And we've been teaching, 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 teaching. But the problem is, is you can't solve the problems in the church or in the world through week seminars. Through a one-week seminar, a weekend seminar. These type, of things, these type of meetings right here, this is strictly what's called stimulus. That's all this is. This is stimulus. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna probably retain very little of what has happened here over this weekend. But hopefully there's a stimulus, something to hit you that says, man, I need to study. You know, I need to get this message, and so on. And then from there, there should be things available. So what my wife and I did is we put a training course. It's going to be available this evening if, if that's something that, you know, you feel you need. But we put together training courses that people can bring to their home. Because we have a missionary training school in New Hampshire. But the problem is we can't get a lot of people to come out to New Hampshire. We're a one-year commitment. You can't come to our school if you can't stay there at least for one year. So therefore, how many people can do that? Not many. So we understand that. So as much as we wish everybody could come, we had to find out how can we get the training to the people. So that was something that we did in our burden. Now you have online training schools as well. I mean, God is good. Technology is being used now to help bridge those gaps. Um, often we come to churches and we do trainings at the churches so we can even help the pastors. Some of the pastors don't even know what to do. Quite honestly, seriously, some of the ministries, a lot of the ministries, they don't even know what to do. So th there's challenges on every level, but again, many people would get started. We'd have much more workers in the church if they were taught how to begin. So I believe that that's a major issue. It's a crisis in our church right now. We're not teaching our people. We're just preaching sermons. And that's... It, Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. And we, we're trying to feed the flock with these spoonfuls on Sabbath, and it doesn't work. You've you got to train people. You've got to get involved in their lives and in the week and everything else. And this is what will help tremendously. I think you mentioned, perhaps in the second section or the third section, that Jesus was consumed with finishing the work. That's right. The question here becomes, as the leaders are teaching the people, us, what are they teaching us? That's right. That's right. I think that's where the problem lies. Because if we, if we were being taught that we ought to be consumed with finishing the work, yes, sir. There'll, there'll, there'll be so many laborers. That's right. Many, much of the crisis is, is contingent upon, number one, people are not being taught. And then number two, for the people who are being taught, they're being fed dangerous food. Mm. Yes. You know, they're getting refined grains instead of whole grains. Yes. So what's happening is, they're not getting the fresh hot bread that they should be getting that was supposed to be disseminated, especially every Sabbath. So that's a whole different issue now. So that's why Jesus, you know, Jesus, while Jesus was part of the church, Jesus was a self-supporting minister. He understood the self-supporting ministry. Okay? And Jesus knew that there are times that there are going to be some things that he's going to have to do outside of the confines of the building or the structure. But yet, he was still doing the God-fearing work. And he was still part of the church. And that's why through inspiration, we have something called self-supporting work. Yeah. And self-supporting work is that not every little, every nook and cranny of the work has to be governed by the church or by the conferences. Not everything. So therefore, if you go to an area for some reason, if for some reason a work is not being done here, and the people are not being given meat in due season, and then you try to bring it in, but it's being blocked or it's not being accepted, meetings, and just all sorts of things causes the delays for it to not happen. 
that's when there are times where you can make people aware. I always tell people, you can go to all men and impart information, but you don't have to go to all men for permission. It's a difference. I always impart, I never come to a church or, or, or an area and not let the brethren know that I'm coming. I'll let them know, conference, churches, whatever, I'll let them know, say, hey, listen, I'm going to be coming to your area, I'm going to be doing the work. Come join us. Why? Because I know that there's all shoots. I understand that there are people out there that are trying to leaven the flock. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I want to try to offset it as much as possible by saying, look, here's who I am, here's what I do, here's my work, here's my trail mm -hmm. of experience, here's all the people that you need me to give you if you want your endorsements or whatever, and here's what I do. I'm coming in your area and I'm going to be doing the work. Please come join us. Take a look. The Bible says Jesus never did anything in secret. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to do anything in secret either. So therefore, I'll invite you. But I'm not going to go to you and say, can I work? <laughs> can I work? Please, can I work? Please, please. No. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you know for information purposes because that's respectful. If I'm coming in your conference, if I'm coming in your territory, I'll let you know and say, hey, listen, I'm coming through. I'm going to be doing this and so on. And that's that. But I'm not necessarily going to ask for your permission. Because you might be at a certain state right now where you can't understand what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and you might think it's dangerous. You know, inspiration tells us that the book counsels to writers and editors, page 29 and 30. Ellen White said that there'll be many in the church who will look at what the work is mm -hmm. that is designed to be finished, but because of various points of blindness, she says they will look upon the work of God and call it dangerous food. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you have no idea how many times I've been told that. Victory over sin, that's not right. It's like, really? I was in Las Vegas one time and somebody came to me. They said, the minister came. I knew he was the minister. He just, he just had a minister. <laughs> Preaching at the church. Preaching at the church, giving a message. Powerful message. And he just came in, he just sat there. <laughs> and I just, and in my mind, I'm like, and the Bible says, and in my mind, I said, that's the minister. And the Bible says, that, and I'm just going. Next thing you know, the meeting was over. The pastor called me in the office. He said, son, he says, you know, they always start with praise. You know, you're great, you're this, you're that. And then he said, uh, did I hear you right that you said that man can have victory over sin? I said, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> and he just said, um, did you know that's not true? I said, really? So what Bible verse do you have that? He says, Romans 3.3. I said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He says, no. He says, if you look carefully in the Greek, it says, all will keep, all will keep sinning and come short of the glory of God. I said, Pastor, I said, that's not what the Greek translation says. And he just said, yes, it is. And he, I said, so are you telling me you believe that we're going to keep sinning until Jesus comes? And he said, absolutely. I said, Pastor, I just saw a snapshot of it. Rome has a plan. They want to launch and pass a Sunday law. And you know it starts in America first. It starts here first. And so what God wants us to understand is we're going to be hit with this test before Africa, before Australia. Eventually it's going to hit the whole world, but we're going to get hit first. And because of that, there's a need for us to get ready right now. There's a need for surrender right now. There's a need for us to say, Lord, I'm going to commit to receiving this message in my heart so that by your grace, this message will transform into a life lived that will be pleasing unto my Creator, unto my Savior. And so our first study is on the message of the hour. Do you understand the relevance of the three angels' messages? Do you really understand it now? We have been given the message to help get this world ready for the second coming of Jesus and to expose this plan of Rome before multitudes will be deceived. Therefore, if any of you have not received this message in your heart, how many of us are going to say, today, I received this message. Amen. I want this message to be full, understood, lived out in my life. That's what I want today. And as you receive the message, then in our next study, we're going to talk about how do we practically take that message and let it be lived out in our lives. That's our next study as we prepare to take our break. So with that, let's close with a word of prayer. And then let's go ahead and stay on. Father in heaven, 
We thank you so much for this message of the hour. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to see the imperative need to understand the work that you want to be finished. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And Father, I'm thankful that as you give us this work, you show us the way in which you would have us to go. That while we see our need to not delay, but to follow the words of inspiration, today, if we hear God's voice, that we would harden not our hearts. Lord, please, make this real for us. Show us your grace, dear God. Show us how to take this message. And Father, I pray that as we receive the message, in our next session, show us how to live it so that way this message can have its transforming effect in our lives. And I thank you that you've heard this prayer. Prepare us, dear God, for the things that are soon to come and help us to be instruments of preparation to others so that by your grace, many shall be saved into your kingdom. It's our prayer we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Quick question, Pastor. How do we expose and circumvent that plan? How do, you how do you expose, expose and circumvent that plan? And, well, basically, what you have to do is you've got to look at, there's a way that God has showed us how to present prophecy mm -hmm. to the church mm -hmm. and to the world at large. What we have to do is we have to first understand the message, mm -hmm. make sure our lives are in harmony with the principles of the message, and then there are several ways that we can give it. The ways that we can give it, we can do everything from door-to-door -door work to the public preaching work, all the way down to the training work. And there's several things. I actually have a presentation where we're going to talk about the outpost centers mm -hmm. and the city missions. So there are several instruments that God has given to us on how we can get this message out to the people, considering the urgency and how much they need to know and understand about it. Okay, and that's circumventing the plan, their, their plan? It, it, to a very large degree, because remember, what, what they want to do mm -hmm. is they want to make sure that you and I don't understand what needs to be done right now. They want to make sure that we don't enter into the experience that we need to have. So therefore, this does, it has a very powerful effect to hold what they're trying to get done. We'll break it down a little bit more in our second session. All right, so if you're staying, then you can just stretch your legs and do what you got to do. But if you're going to another meeting,